Hey there everyone, this is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus drydocks.com. You'll see I'm not in the shop and I'm not outside. I'm in my home office here because I want to share with you some information that I get asked a lot and that it talks about how to secure your watertight cylinder in your boat. So let's take a look at some options. All right, when we talk about securing your watertight cylinder, there's a few things that we need to take into consideration. The most important being, how are you accessing your hull? If you've got uh, you know, the top being removed from the bottom, you've got a lot of access, you've got a lot of options. Uh, if it's a vertical split you know, with like a bayonet style release, it's gonna be a little bit different. Today, I want to share with you a few different options that I've used in the past, these are sort of the major buckets of uh, cylinder hold down. I'm gonna have, sh use a, uh, a digital image in my CAD program to show you what I'm talking about. So uh, let's jump into it. So what we've got here is a representation of a, a hull with some bulkheads in there, some stiffening bulkheads. These are very typically installed in a boat to make sure you've got rigidity in your hull and I've got all this like stuff around the outside but for now ignore it because there's going to be talking about these different hold down methods and I'm going to be going through them one at a time. The other thing we've got here is this generic representation of a watertight cylinder. Uh, don't worry about the length or the diameter or anything like that. This is all applicable irregardless of the size of your cylinder. So let's get started. Before we go any further, there are several considerations that you need to make sure you're taking into account when you're choosing your specific style of hold down. So the thing that we want to do is stop our cylinder from moving uh, forward and backward, um, up and down. And then we also want to stop it from rotating. Uh, very, very important when you've got a a single shaft coming out the bottom. You're gonna have some torque on your cylinder. You don't want it to roll around in the cradle. The first way, uh, which is very, very simple and is applicable if your ballast tank uh, in the middle here is like a, a low pressure version that is open to the outside. So if there's drain holes in the bottom of your ballast tank down here, uh, the entire thing is open, you know, to the outside water and you've got a vent in the top typically. This is how our subdriver watertight cylinders are set up, how the old style uh, subdriver watertight cylinders were set up and how a lot of homebrew cylinders are set up. I find the easiest way to achieve um, lockdown for uh, a cylinder like this uh, is the use of a pin. So we're going to take a look at that in the middle. So we've got a bulkhead in the bottom of our boat and we've got a little brass pin, say like a one eighth of an inch that you're just gonna drill in and have sticking up out of the bottom there. In alignment with that, so in a vertical line heading upwards, you're gonna drill a slightly larger hole in the bottom of your ballast tank. Doesn't matter, you're not poking holes in anything that doesn't need to be poked into. Um, because everything is open anyway. So now you've got an alignment pin that is going to align to an alignment hole. So this first style that we're talking about here is this, uh, this pin idea that goes up. So we've drilled uh, a hole here, we've inserted the pin, we've got a hole in the bottom of the cylinder, and now all we need to do is, uh, is drop that cylinder down in place that pin goes into the hole and now the cylinder cannot move forward and back and it cannot rotate and it cannot go down. The only thing it can do is go up. And uh, we're gonna talk about a really easy way of securing that. These are little brass pins. Uh, and we're gonna drill those. You can see I've got some holes in here um, into this bulkhead. And so now we've got hooks. And now we're gonna use this like super complicated high tech P 
piece of engineering. Uh, and we're going to use some uh, rubber bands. And those are basically going to uh, hook over these hooks. And now we've got that last problem, that, that upward movement of the cylinder stopped. So these rubber bands are now holding the cylinder down in place. It can't move up. Very easy to install. You just hook it over the one side, hook it over the other side, and you're done. Only thing I'll say about this is you want to make sure that you do not uh, overuse these rubber bands. Swap them out every season. You don't want one popping off at the pond, your cylinder becoming disengaged, your drive line coming apart, and your linkages coming apart. Uh, not a cool scenario. The next way of doing this, if this is a sealed tank, we don't want that pin there. All right, so actually let me back up and I'll uh, jump in here and I'm just gonna kill this. So now there's no pin. And we're gonna drop this back down again. There we go. So now we've got our cylinder. This would be, say for example, like an OTW cylinder. Um, or like a piston tank cylinder, something like that where you don't want to be poking holes in the outside diameter of this cylinder. Like an R&R &R unit, that would be the same sort of thing. Now you may or may not have these knurled nuts on the outside. It doesn't matter. Ignore them for now, okay? What you're going to want to do is, uh, is make a bulkhead that looks something like this. It's a, uh, you know, just a, a semicircular bulkhead and you're going to put it right kind of flush with the end of your cylinder. All right. So this is what it looks like. It's pinned the cylinder in from that direction. And now we're going to do the same thing from this direction. So now the cylinder cannot move forward and backward. All right. Problem is it'll still be able to move up, uh, not down, and it can also spin if you don't have these neural nuts. So that's not good. Um, what you're gonna do is just make a little block, just like this, and uh, glue it permanently to the end cap. All right, so now if you take a look at this, the cylinder has this, this block mounted to the end cap permanently, and uh, when it's down and in place, that block rests on that bulkhead right there. So now this cylinder cannot rotate left and right because the block is interfering with the bulkhead there. Now all we do is um, what we had done before. We just uh, install a series of these hooks, uh, grab our rubber bands, uh, drop them down in place, and now your cylinder is locked in place. It can't move forward and back. It can't move up. It can't move down and it cannot rotate. We got our cylinder in place. Now, if you've got a cylinder that does have knurled nuts, uh, such as an OTW unit or the 300 series sub drivers, um, you got another option. Uh, and that includes the uh, creation of a bulkhead that looks like this. So it's, it fits inside the cylinder and you've got these holes that align to the knurled nuts, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna move this um, up and I'm gonna move it over a little bit. So that's our cylinder, it's sitting out. We haven't installed it yet. Let's grab our bulkhead and we're going to, whoops, we're going to move it over. So now it's in place, it looks like this, okay? This is at the back. This is at the back. All right. So now we're going to grab our cylinder and we are going to, uh, basically to install it, we are going to, uh, drop it down. So it looks, uh, let's see here, something like this. And now we're just going to slide it forward until those knurled nuts go through the hole and the cylinder butts up against here. So this works really good because your, your drivetrain in the back, if you're using like a dog bone, it just slips in place. So you can lock down the drivetrain uh, in the back of the boat. Now at the front, this is what this section is gonna look like. 
Um, this is permanently mounted in place, okay? So you're gonna install the cylinder kind of at an angle, you know, the, the knurled nuts will go in their hole in the back there, and then you drop the, the front down, and now it's sitting in this, almost like a cradle, okay? Now we're going to take this piece here, and it drops right on top. So it's kind of sandwiching these little knurled nuts. And then this bolt right here would get put in place, locking it down. So now this thing is really going nowhere. It's being held in place uh, at the front with this lockdown and the bolt, and then it's held down in the back by being uh, completely surrounded by the bulkhead back here. Really elegant uh, solution. It looks really slick. Some people don't like the kind of ghetto look of rubber bands. By the way, it's, uh, rather than rubber bands, you can also use Velcro. Um, I've seen people use stainless hose clamps. So there's lots of options there. Um, the one thing I will say, you want to make sure that this bolt doesn't like line up with a stud uh, up here. So you could put two potentially uh, or just one off to the side. Just make sure you can get to this, obviously, um, so that it works. Now, what we want to do, uh, let's talk about what happens if you've got a boat that uh, doesn't have a horizontal split like this. It's a vertical split, like a bayonet uh, style. Um, so this would be the back of your boat over here. This is the front of the boat. So you can split the hull up here and they're gonna slide this cylinder into place. All right, so we're just gonna grab it and we're gonna slide it forward. Just like that. All right, so now it's, it's in place. It can't go up, it can't go down, it can spin and it can move forward and backward. So what we're gonna do to stop that from happening, we're just gonna make a real simple little bulkhead thingy on this end. Bloop. So this is all in place. This cylinder will come forward, bunk, and it's gonna hit, hit this thing. And again, this can mate directly to your drivetrain. These can snap directly in, especially if you're using magnetic uh, linkages. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna see if I can um, make this transparent. Ah, there we go. Now we can see what we're talking about. Um, so yeah, now this, this all, all can go in here. Now, uh, in a lot of boats, what you're actually going to want to do is build like an access hatch in the bottom here so that you could manually connect these linkages. But, uh, I'm talking specifically about cylinder hold downs. Um, this is what I've got going on here. So now in the front, um, we need to stop this thing from moving and here's the uh, the little piece that I would probably use just goes in like this So these pins these nuts are holding it down stopping it from rotating again If you don't have these um, you can put that little block right down here mounting it permanently to the end cap and then when you put this bulkhead in um that would stop the uh, the rotational torque. And then you would just put two screws, one here and one here, and that would lock the cylinder in place. So this would be how I would handle like a bayonet style or um, you know, vertically split hull. So there you go. Uh, a few different options for cylinder hold downs. Um, lots of different ways of doing it. This is not an exhaustive list, but if you've got uh, questions about that, by all means, reach out to me anytime, bob at nautilusdrydocks.com. We can talk through your specific application. But if you take a look at these, um, they should get you going, give you some options for your boat. With that, uh, we're gonna end up uh, calling this video done. I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you do like what you see, please like and subscribe. It helps us out here at the Dry Docks a lot. With that, I'll let you go. It's Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus Dry Docks. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.